Today we are going to be installing this Palisade um, waterproof grout free wall planks. Hey, it's Danielle over at DIYDanielle.com and today I'm going to show you how to install this um, Palisades um, wall... What's, what's the word I'm looking for? Waterproof and grout-free wall planks. So this is a little different than the project I did before, which was very similar, except for I had bigger, um, pretty much bigger pieces um, for my upstairs bathroom. This one is a lot like putting in... Um, flooring so um you've got your pieces that are easily cut with like a knife which is pretty much ideal you want a jigsaw to go around like parts like your um your faucet and everything but um for the most part you can use a knife um just like a regular utility knife make sure you have some extra blades but it's very easy to cut and um you just you draw your score line and you snap it and it goes right in half actually probably a little easier than the flooring i just did so your pieces are like this and you'll notice on the side you have two different sides and you got to keep track of which side's which because you don't want to put it the wrong way otherwise they won't fit together. So your pieces have flanges on flanges? I don't know. Whatever. On each side so that they can fit together. Um, these aren't going to fit together this way. But um, let's see. The side with the bigger lip goes into the side with the smaller lip. Whoosh. So it tucks in. Your wall planks are attached to the wall using adhesive, which you will get in your kit if you buy the shower kit or the bathroom kit. Um, you also get... silicone caulk. This caulk goes between each layer. So when you are putting in your next column of tiles, you put your caulk along this line here that helps keep water from seeping through behind your tiles. Um, you also do it along each seam. So every seam you put this stuff. On the back you put your adhesive that sticks to your wall. And you should have some sort of waterproof type board behind it. This is Schluter. Um, you could use um, number of other options so um yes so we used corner trim which looks like this and you cut it to you cut it to the height you need and you stick it in place that's the first thing we did because this is a one corner and we are working out from both sides if you were doing a whole tub you're gonna do it a little different probably go watch my other video because it's a little it's a little different because you have to fit between the two corners but I attached this corner piece first. This piece is already in. I added my silicone caulk into the gap and then started with my um, pieces while the caulk was still wet, of course, because you want it all to dry together. Um, the one thing I found really useful is using flooring kit pieces. Um, this and a mallet helps you kind of just shove it in the spot properly once you get it locked in place you can get it kind of wiggled into the exact right spot if you use something like this. And I'll show you what that looks like. Um, you're gonna have J trim. This goes along the edges so that you cover your edge so you don't have a raw edge showing. So this covers it. There's also trim for, um, there's like an outside corner trim, I think. So it looks like this. I don't think I'll need this, but maybe, I don't know. It's got kind of a weird corner here. So I'm just showing you some quick video of me installing this. Again, it's really not complicated. I'm gonna show you also how we cut the pieces um, here in a minute, but let's go. Just to give you a look at the other trim pieces, we've got this piece here, and this is some J trim. So this goes on the outer edges. And this is another piece of the inner trim. Okay, so I've got my glue on the inside here. I'm just gonna tuck this over here and push it into the corner. Okay, so to cut them, you are gonna take your measurement, figure out, in this case, I'm cutting about five inches. Make sure you're cutting the right side. So in this case, I need the flange on these two sides and the top. So I'm cutting five inches down.
I find using a speed score really helpful. Um, so I've got five inches. I'm going to take this. If you get a really good score the first time, you don't need to score it multiple times. You take this, you get your score mark, and it breaks off like that. Very easy to do. Um, I find this very easy to work with. Okay, so we started, um, we started out, so I cut a panel in half because I wanted to start with not a full panel, of course. Um, so we started this, um, we added adhesive to the back and we added the caulk they included. You add just a little bit inside the channel there and slip it into place. The other panels will all lock together and we're gonna do the same thing. But we do wanna keep a paper towel on hand just to wipe any excess that comes out. Um, go ahead, you can go. go ahead and grab it real quick. Kiddo's helping us. So. Okay, so adhesive goes in the back, just enough, not too much. Caulk uh, goes into the any seam and into the gap here on the side of the corner trim. It all squishes together. You wanna make sure it's locked in properly and wipe away the excess. And this is us just tracing around the opening for the faucet so we can cut it out with the jigsaw. And again, here's one of the top ones going in. You want to make sure you leave enough room at the top so that you have some wiggle room to insert it. Snap it down and then move it over. Okay, so this is just going to be a sped up video showing us installing it. It does take time. Cutting is pretty time consuming and we followed the pattern. So the first one, the third one, third row is like the same. Okay, so we've done a few panels of these and we're quickly realizing it's not quite like the big panels we did before because it is a little bit more like flooring in that there's quite a few more pieces to go in. Um, it just impacts things a little bit more. You have a lot more sliding it into the right spot and making sure everything's lined up than you do with bigger panels, of course, because you don't have as many rows and columns, whatever. So we are using, we actually pulled out our equipment from doing the flooring. This is a really, this works. Um, if you've never seen these, this helps you kind of push it into place when you're using putting laminate flooring in. So we'll show you how that works on this. So first we're gonna slide this on. And the thing is you wanna make sure it locks in place correctly. So some of this you're gonna do by hand. You need to slide it by hand so it gets locked in place. Otherwise, if you try like pounding it into place, it could crack the, um, I don't know, I forget, what was what would the word be that I need to use though? The, the lip? Tongue, the tongue and groove. The tongue and groove, thank you. Um, so you get it into place, make sure it's in place, but it might not be all the way over. And that's where this thing comes into hand. Comes in handy. <laughs> There you go. So you can do this down and you can do this across. You put it in place here and you just use this to pound it right in as tight as possible to the seam. Okay, and then you can do it to the left, from left to right as well. Now obviously we couldn't do this for our first row because it would be too close to the, um, to the corner. But once you get two rows in it works, so. Um, yeah, so that's that. That just helps you get a little closer. Obviously, we're gonna wipe some of this excess away and then we'll start with the next column. Okay, so for the edges that I'm finished. Oops, ah, sorry. Okay. For the edge that I got all the way to the side on here, I need to cover with J-Trim. So this is what your J-Trim looks like. It's very easy to cut with Tim Snips. I'm just gonna show you, this is not the piece, this is just a scrap. But... <laughs> Man, it's really hard to cut. But as you can see, there's your edge right there where you cut. 
This is actually a different edge I cut. So this just slips over the edge of your tile. So you slip it over like this. So I will need some caulk in this gap and I will also need glue on the back here. So. So the last part I'm doing is this edge here. So you can see it's got like a little bump out. It's not ideal, um, not really what I wanted to work with. And then it goes like this at the top, which adds a little bit extra difficulty to this. However, I am gonna use the J trim at this bottom part up to here and then put the corner trim around this corner here. So I had to cut a thin strip of wood. And again, I'm following the same height as this one because it's my next size over. So I'm gonna glue the J trim on first and then I'm gonna attach this. See, I've got this here. Now when it's in there, you kind of have to push it um, so the glue sticks where it's supposed to. It's kind of slippery so it'll slide around on there a little bit. Um, so I'm just making sure it sticks to the back here and not to the wrong spot. So that'll throw off my measurements for sure. Um, and then I'm just gonna slide my silicone caulk right in here so I can start applying these. These get wood glue as well. There, we're gonna caulk around the bottom. I'm not gonna show that. I've got videos on caulking. If you really need to know that, please learn how to do that before you start this project because you use a lot of caulk in this. Um, I will mention one thing, any of the small strips, <laughs> this was very hard because it's not quite, like it's very hard to push it and let it dry. The glue they give you, the adhesive, this is Manus Bond, I don't know. I don't know anything about this. And it could be the curdy board or whatever it's called underneath. It's hard to stick to. I'm not sure. But this did not do a very good job of quickly drying, which wasn't a problem for most of the boards. But for the smaller cuts like this, it would have been nice to have a faster drying um, adhesive. Okay, so I adhered this thin strip all the way up and then I added a piece of corner trim over this edge to cover both the raw edge of this and the raw edge of this. Of course, I had silicone caulk and glue here. Um, I realized I probably should have cut this top panel so that it went out like this and then followed up with this J trim. I did not do that, but I'm not gonna fix it because it is a lot of work and it's kind of a minor cosmetic thing. Again, might bother you, um, but for me, I'm happy with what it looks like. So this is it. I'll show you later once it's all finished and the bathroom's finished. I got to do the walls next. But um, thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Check out my blog post about it because that'll have some more information. And make sure to visit DIY Decor Store to pick these up if you decide to buy the product. Uh, thanks so much. Take care. Have a great day. And make sure to follow me on my channel.